Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Josh from J Media, and today we're going to be talking about how different lenses can affect the style of shooting when you are using your glide cam. Now many of you YouTubers out there probably know the videographer or cinematographer known as Devin Graham or Devin Supertramp. He uses a glide cam similar to the style of this stabilizer. And what he does in all of his or most of his videos, he uses a wide angle lens. Now why does he use a wide angle lens? Devin uses a wide angle lens to actually capture movement. He's using that glide cam for a reason, to simulate the camera gliding or flying through the air. So you want to have a huge wide shot to simulate movement. Now one of my previous videos about using a steady cam like this, I've been using a 15 millimeter lens. 50 millimeter lenses are considered normal lenses. What does normal mean? Pretty much a 50 millimeter lens simulates your eyes. So what you see in a 50 millimeter lens is pretty close to what our eyes see. I'm going to be using a 5D Mark II today for our footage, and if you know a little bit about the 5D, you'll know that it's a full frame 35mm sensor camera. If you're using a crop sensor camera, like the T2i or any other Canon or any other Nikon camera to do your video shots, a 50mm lens might be a little bit too narrow for your shots. So I suggest going wide angle. Now later on in the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to run with the glide cam, how to run with your steady cam, get those really, really cool shots. Devin uses a glide cam for a reason, right? He wants to get those cool moving and gliding shots. And most of his shots do involve a lot of running. So if you're not good at your cardio, I suggest hitting up that treadmill and uh, getting some cardio done. All right, so let's get some test footage done. I'm gonna be first testing out a 28 millimeter lens with the Canon 5D Mark II. Let's see how it looks like. Alright, so after watching that footage, I hope that you could have told the difference between the 50mm lens and the 28mm lens. The 28mm lens was obviously the wide frame shot. It gives you a lot wider picture and it gives you more perception of distance and speed, while the 50mm does the complete opposite. It still gives you that partial gliding and flying effect, but not as big as the 28 millimeter lens. So why would I use a 50 millimeter lens on a Steadicam? Well, if I'm filming two subjects or one subject or three, four, or five subjects talking to each other and walking at the same time, I probably don't want to use a shoulder rig because it's going to transport a lot of my footsteps into the footage. All right. And we don't want that. So I'm going to use a Steadicam to get that smooth, anti-shock type of shots. So you don't see any of the vibrations of my feet when I'm walking and any of that stuff. And what the 50 millimeter does is that it doesn't really let the audience focus on the outside of the subjects being filmed, but it really focuses on the subjects themselves. The wide angle lens would not be a good choice when I'm doing tracking shots with subjects because this will be really distracting to the audience since they'll see everything outside, all the surrounding space, the negative space, what we call it. We want to keep the 50 millimeter specifically for shots that involve subjects talking or dialogue or any of that type of stuff. The 28 millimeter would be really cool for nature shots and, 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 and wildlife. So I would totally use that for for uh, wildlife shots and when you're going hiking and all that stuff. Whenever you want the audience to see the perception of speed and distance, I would totally go with the 28 millimeter lens. Now we're going to talk about the fun and most challenging part about operating a Steadicam and that is running with your Steadicam. Now if you're going to be running with your Steadicam, odds are you're going to be using a wide angle or a fisheye lens because you want the audience to see your perception the camera's perception of speed and distance. So the best way to do that is by using a wide angle lens. So you want to stay around the focal length 
between 35 millimeter and lower than that. All right, you want to keep it 35 millimeter and under. 28 millimeter is what I'm going to be using today, and I think it gives you really, really nice footage. And I, I just love using the 28 millimeter. Of course, this is a zoom lens, so it's going to be pretty heavy for me. Eventually, I'm going to buy a 28 millimeter prime fixed lens. So let's go outside. I'm going to teach you guys how to run with your Steadicam. All right, so we're outside now, finally. It's a beautiful sunny day in Los Angeles, California. And we're going to be uh, running with our Steadicams today. Now, a few little tips about running and using your Steadicam. Tip number one, always wear good shoes. Tennis shoes are, are preferable because they do absorb a little bit of shock when you run. If you wear sandals or any type of thin shoes, odds are you're going to probably get a little bit more vibration in your footage. But I'm going to be wearing thin shoes so you guys can see if there's any vibration in my footage. So when you're running with your Steadicam, you want to make sure that you try and keep both hands on your Steadicam at all times. Thumb back here, forefinger there, and you can probably add your middle finger into the mix and help turn the camera if it ends up wandering off the center. So you always want to keep your hand under the gimbal and lightly touching it and guiding the stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and go back there and I'm going to start running. Alright guys, let's see how the footage looks like. Woo, that was tiring. Breaking a sweat over here. <laughs> so if you noticed, when I was running with the Steadicam, I tried my best to keep both hands on the Steadicam. One on the handle, and one under the gimbal guiding the Steadicam so it would be centered. Now, in certain times, you can't always have both hands on, to, on the stabilizer. So if you noticed in the footage, I removed my hand for a few seconds because I knew that the stabilizer would be centered on its own. I wouldn't have to guide it. But this is when you actually understand how the stabilizer behaves in certain conditions. So I'm a little used to this laying and I know how it's going to react when I'm running, jumping. So when I'm certain that the camera or stabilizer will be centered, I can remove my, ha my hand when I feel comfortable. But 98% of the time, I'm going to have my hand under the gimbal guiding it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you out. And if you have any questions, comments, please write them down below. All right. Thank you guys.